All right, so now we are going to talk a little bit about government, since we've been talking up to now about market controls. And market controls, obviously, have to be made by a government. Um, because, you know, government is the only regulators that have the power to put controls on markets. Now we're going to talk about the three different kinds of economies and governmental styles. Let's say. So, we will have economies. And government over here. So, the three types of economies. First off, we have the command economy. So, demand economy, you ever heard of it? Um, yeah. Hammer and sickle kind of stuff. So, that is Soviet Union. Um, command economies are pretty much what they're called centrally planned which means that the government makes all of the regulations and, and controls all of the prices so we're talking down here price controls this you know we were talking about how you know people have been discussing maybe we do this for certain drugs like Advil and stuff like that well and we talked about how that was, uh, to a certain extent, that was inefficient for the for the market. Well, centrally planned economies pretty much means the government, oops, the government does this for everything. They set all of the prices for everything that is being sold, which is a crazy idea because that that is. Um, and that is, oh, you know, there are millions and millions of products that are being sold. But anyway, uh, so centrally planned. Everything has a price that is set by the government. Um, there is what is another mark of a central or a command economy is there is no consumer choice. So, consumer, just to clarify, is another name for customers. No buyer choice. So, consumer is pretty much just a, a way of saying you you consume products, you, you use products. So, you're a product user. Um, anyway, there is no user or buyer or customer choice there's only one uh one brand that is subsidized meaning it is given the money to to run the business it is subsidized by the government so for example in in a market economy down here the reason why markets are set is because this supply curve there are multiple companies that are competing for your business right here in the center um, and the more companies that compete for your business the more prices there are so you as the person who is driving the demand you're going to go to whatever company you think has the best the, the best quality the best price the best um, the, the best, uh, company values, whatever it is, you are going to go to the company that has, whoops, the company that has the best of them all. Um, and so all of those companies have to compete. And when you go to a company that has the best price, that means all of the others are going to try and make their prices as low as possible. So the problem with having one company 
means there is no consumer choice. There is no competition, right? And prices are set by the government. So, and then another aspect um, is, this one's a little bit more complicated, but it's central ownership. Oops. of the means of production. So what does that mean? So the means of production are things like, for energy, they'd be coal mines, and you know the, the drills that they use for coal mines, and um, all of like the the, the business around that and the structure to that. So they, the government owns everything about the, the means of production, the way that you produce things. The means being the way that you produce. So the government owns all of that. That is kind of the idea of a command economy. Then there is the free market economy, which is kind of what we've been talking about down here. This right here, that is the free market, where suppliers and demanders meet freely and decide on their own, they decide on their own to make a free choice and trade labor for goods or services. So that is the free market. And a free market is characterized by little to no government intervention. So price controls or minimum wages would not be aspects of the free market because the free market would say, hey, they both want that price right there, they're both willing to take that, let them take that. Don't try and use any, or don't try and make it at all inefficient because you're going to lose stuff right there. You're going to lose um, hires or you're going to lose jobs and workers. Let people take that price right there if they really want to take that price. So that would be the, the free market. Little to no government involvement. Another aspect, the profit motive, meaning money is the incentive profit motive is the incentive for businesses And economic development. So the reason why you make a business and why the economy grows is because people want money. You want money. I want money. Costco wants money. Uh, Walgreens wants money. Target wants money. All those places want money. All of their workers want money. And because everybody wants money, you have to give me something that I want, and I will trade you money. So, um, And that helps you because you have more money. You have more ways to pay for things. And it helps me because I have a product that I want. So businesses are made to produce products that people want so they can make money. Economies grow because businesses produce more things and people buy more things. So that's another aspect of the free market. And another one, prices are driven by supply and demand.
as well as competition. That's the, the one, that's one of the major differences. Well, all of these are major differences, but competition is one of the major differences between a command economy and the free market. And then lastly, the last distinction here is in the free market. Oops. Huh. There we go. Sorry, my pen wasn't working for a second. So, the last distinction is in the free market. There are plenty of choices for customers. So, just like you can go to Walgreens or that you can go to Target or you can go to Walmart or you can go to Costco or you can go whatever you want. If you're looking for uh, a screwdriver, you can go to Lowe's, you can go to Ace Hardware, you can go to Menards. There are plenty of choices for you to go to. And with each choice comes a price, quality, and I'll say for right now, marketing stuff. Because there are a bunch of other things that drive people to buy one place over another. That all falls into marketing. But the two main ones, price and quality, are what really drive choices. And when there are a lot of choices, then you choose based on the best price, the best, the best quality, and some marketing decisions. So, right there, that is the free market. Um, all right. Now, lastly, sorry, we'll move all this down. So, as of right now, we have the centrally planned economy, the command economy, the free market economy, and then there's one last choice. The mixed economy. So, as you might guess, because there are only two things that can be mixed, the mixed economy is a little bit of command economy and a little bit of the free market economy. Um, and a mix, it's a mix between the two. So, how do you mix these two when they seem completely opposed? Well, here are some aspects of the mixed economy. First off, there's not total government control like you would have in the central economy. Or the command economy, I mean. But there are regulations. Which the free market does not have. So, so uh, regulations exist. Um, so the free market, no regulations at all. Central command economy, everything is regulated. Mixed economy, you get a little bit of regulations, but not total governmental control. Secondly, the government is... And I'm sure, well, maybe you guys have heard these terms before, maybe not. Government controls what's called the public sector. And businesses control the private sector. All right, so what are some examples of the public sector and the private sector? All right, well, example of the public sector would be like the, the CTA. The city of Chicago runs the CTA. That is the public sector because 
It is not owned by any one company or any one person. It's owned by the city of Chicago, which technically means that it's owned by everyone because we all pay taxes. All of your families pay taxes. And the taxes are what support the government. The government uses your taxes to pay for stuff. So the CTA is pretty much, it's, it is owned by the government, which in effect means it's everybody's because it is public. And that's why it's called public. And another reason that's why it's called public transportation, because it is the government's, and what is the government's is everybody's shared, everybody who pays taxes. All right, example of the private sector. Private sector would be like Costco or Dollar Tree, um, because these places are owned by companies, were started by people, and are not owned by the government. It's, it's private, it's owned by individuals or groups of people, and is not, not owned by society or the government. Okay, another aspect, moving on. Individuals and businesses are decision makers. Uh, oops, uh, I already said that. Individuals and businesses are the private sector, Alright, so prices are driven by supply. But only in part. Well, supply and demand and competition. But only a part it is also driven by government regulation. So, I guess the best way to give an example of that is to say that the United States is not a command economy and not a free market economy though many people may say that, the United States, as well as most other countries in the world, are mixed economies. And to give an example of the last point, government regulation, well, we already talked about it. The best example that I could give is right over here, the minimum wage. This right here is government intervention, stepping into the private sector, right? And the government regulation says, hey, well, you can, you have to pay your, your workers this much. And even if it's inefficient, even if less people get jobs, you have to pay workers that much. But they still can pay their workers more or pay them less. And that's driven by supply and demand and competition. So that would be a mixed economy. And that's an example of the United States government. All right, we might be running just a little bit close on time here, but I'll try and really quick go over the, the types of government. So you've probably heard a lot that the United States is a A democracy. We are a democracy. But is that true? No. We are not a democracy. A lot of people say that. We are not a democracy. We are what's called a democratic republic. If you think of the Pledge of Allegiance, you can remember the part that says, uh, I pledge allegiance to the United States. Uh, I, I pledge allegiance to the United States. Ugh, wow, this is really embarrassing. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America 
and to the republic for which it stands. We are a republic. Excuse my, uh, my forgetting the Pledge of Allegiance for a second there. I'm having a lot of mistakes tonight. It's getting a little late over here. I'm recording this at night, so excuse me being tired. But anyway, to the republic for which it stands. We are a republic. Okay, what is the difference? Well, the difference is democracy is rule by majority. Right? So, this would be like if everybody in the room voted together and said, you know what? We are all going to vote that nobody can say mean words anymore. Right? Um, and that became law. And Everybody was okay with it. Everybody voted on it. Let's say 60% of people said yes, and 40 said no. Well, then, since the majority said yes, then we can no longer say mean words. All right? That is democracy. Rule by majority. A republic is rule by law. So, if you can guess the difference here, the difference between a democracy and a republic is who is ruling, who or what is ruling. So a republic, on the other hand, an example of a republic are, or is, let's say, I mean, the best way to show it is the constitution. So, one person says, all right, let's vote and say that we can no longer say mean words anymore, all right? Well, our First Amendment says we have the freedom of speech. So that means that we have a foundation of law. Our foundation of law says we can, we cannot override certain things. And if the freedom of speech is part of that foundation, the founding documents, then no matter what we say, we cannot overrule that. So the way that the U.S. is a democratic republic is in the fact that we have founding documents, but... We elect people who go in and vote for us on things that do not contradict those founding documents. So, as long as these people are voting on stuff like taxes or what to do about the roads or stuff like that that do not go directly against the founding documents, we are A, okay. But when people start to go against it, that's why everybody talks about uh, the Constitution, because we are a democratic republic, and we don't go against our Constitution. All right, why is this important for a business class, you might ask? Well, it's important for a business class because all of this, command economies, free markets, and mixed economies, all of that, on top of all this government stuff, all of this decides how much intervention the government will have in economies over here. How much intervention will governments have on economies? And how much intervention governments will have in, in your private life? So with a, with a democracy, if we were just solely a democracy, if we, if 60% voted, you know what, I am going to steal all of Saul's chocolate that he went out and he worked 
you know, a couple hours around his house for, and then his parents gave him an allowance. I am going to go out and steal all of his chocolate, and Saul was, you know what, let's, let's say it was 90%. And Saul was the only person out of those 10 people who said no. Then, no matter what, if we're a democracy, the majority rules. So, Saul would lose his chocolate. Um, the problem with that is, when we're talking about businesses, down over here, if we were a democracy, then if somebody were to, or if we were to vote on anything like um, who controls the gold in Fort Knox, or who controls all the, uh, the production of PlayStations and stuff like that, if the majority wants to take control of it, then the majority will get it. And that is, that is why we talk a little bit. Don't go too deep into it, but we talk a little bit about government, a little bit about econ uh, types of economies, because it's really important on how economies are run and what role the government has in businesses. All right, well, that is all I got for you guys today. And um, before we go, I want you guys to really take a, uh, take a minute to think about what went well in this lecture and what you think did not go so well um, and how I could help teach you better, how I could improve the way that I give these lectures. And if you like it, then just tell me in office hours. Uh, tell me if you thought it went well. If you thought that there were things that I could improve on, please hit me up and let me know um, in office hours and tell me Hey John, like I think, you know, I think we could really do better if you um, weren't so monotone or weren't so boring. I don't know. Tell me something. Let me know what you guys think. All right. Well, thanks for listening. In.